Zwei Group invites all AEC industry leaders to the 2024 AEC Small Business and Entrepreneurship Forum, the premier event for small firms in the AEC sector. Experience innovative strategies and insights on May 21st, crafted by Zweig Group's industry experts. Engage in keynotes and interactive sessions focused on recruitment, retention, and business growth. Join Zwei Group for this unique networking opportunity and take your business to new heights. Secure your spot today and be part of the AEC industry's future. Visit ZweigGroup.com for more information. The Zwei Group team looks forward to welcoming you. Welcome to the Zweig Letter Podcast, putting architectural, engineering, planning, and environmental consulting experts straight talk in your ear. These podcasts deliver great interviews with industry leaders and Zweig Group's three decades of invaluable research, leadership, management, marketing, client, and HR advice directly to you, free of charge. The Zweig Letter Podcasts let you develop personally and professionally, wherever you are. Hey folks, and welcome to another episode of the Zweig Letter Podcast. I'm your host, Randy Wilburn, and I'm here today with none other than Mark Zweig, founder and chairman of Zweig Group. Uh, so excited to to drag him into my office for a few minutes just to chat, and um, it's been a minute since we've had him on the podcast, but uh, we always like to check back in and see what the chairman is up to and see what he's been doing lately. And uh, as you know, in the past, we used to have Mark read his articles from the Zweig letter, which, you know, after a while that became kind of boring. And so we wanted to amp up or ramp up the conversation, if you will, and uh, engage a little bit more with this gen- this individual that has had almost 38 years of experience in the design industry. And I know that, um, you know, when you say that out loud, it sounds like, man, this guy is really old, but he's not. He's actually a quite, quite young, a quite young 60 and uh, still has so much more roadway left. <laughs> so. yeah, I feel like all I do is go to doctors. I just set an appointment before this uh, session we're having right now. Well, oh, that's okay. I mean, so, we, we need to, we need to, I mean, listen, all I you, do. you take your car to get tuned up. I mean, it's the same principle. Does it, it doesn't matter. So, and you do pretty well at taking care of yourself. So mm-hmm. that's half the battle, but no, in all seriousness, we're really glad to have you on today. And um, the reason why I wanted to talk with you uh, for this particular, episode is that you wrote an article not too long ago in the Zweig letter uh, from August 6th uh, edition of the Zweig letter uh, about selling a lot of work and it's a thing that we do that we that the necessary thing that has to be done in order for firms to stay viable to stay alive and you said that we all should know by now that those who can sell a lot of work are the people who rise to the top of their firms have the greatest job security and make the most money. That's a direct quote from you from that article. And and so I wanted you to kind of talk about, and, and, and for those listening, understanding this idea that if you're an engineer, if you're an architect, if you're an introvert, and you've never really kind of pushed uh, pushed yourself to get out of your shell and to engage others, not just internally, but externally, uh, stakeholders in the community that you serve, um, potential clients that you could work with. Uh, now is the time for you to try to exercise that muscle. And it really is a muscle. It's not people, there's no such thing as a, na- I don't believe there's a such thing as a natural born salesperson. I, I believe that people understand and find their voice. Some find it earlier than others. And when they find it, they use it to their advantage. And uh, I'd love, I mean, Mark has basically sold things since he was, from my understanding, since he was quite young, like almost 10 or 11 years old. Um, from even t- younger. Even yeah. younger, yeah. I'm sorry, I don't mean that's to shortchange right. no, you. So, that's fine. Yeah. Was, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, but Selling you... Selling bikes on my mom and dad's street corner. Yeah, there in in, in Missouri. But, uh, I mean, I think it's it's appropriate that... So, some people would say, well, Mark, you, you, you were a natural. 
you know, if there is such a thing as a natural, you are a natural. And, um, you know, I think that I don't know that that's the case, but I think you found you found your voice early on and you made it work. Um, and, and I think, you know, that's why you, you, you came up with a couple of different things that individuals can do uh, and what real salespeople are able to do that differentiate them from everyone else. And one of the first things you said is that they believe they can succeed. So, so talk a little bit about that and just that belief and that mindset. Well, I mean, it's it's a fundamental thing. Um, if you don't think you can do something, you're probably not going to be able to do it. And it's just like your kids with math or whatever they struggle with. You know, one of my daughters, she's 12. She, you know, gets into this cycle or has been in it before. Well, I'm not good at math. Well, you know she is because you've seen her standardized test scores. Right. But she's convinced she's not good at math. As soon as she starts getting the idea that she is good at it, she has some success, has a nice supportive teacher, whatever, then suddenly she's good at math. Right. You know, it, yeah. it, it, the belief is, is so fundamental. And you see it with people the architecture and engineering business they they didn't go to school to become salespeople. they went to school to be engineers or architects or whatever they are and um, some of them just think uh, they can't do it it's not you know they for whatever reason they they think there's a stereotypical personality type that they have to have or, right or you know they tried selling something once and failed or whatever it is yeah but um you got to believe you can do it you got to you got to be able to visualize it you got to believe you deserve to succeed you got to believe you have the capability to do it okay all right and i know you've you've had over the years that like, you've told tons of stories about uh what i would qu- quote call introverted engineers or introverted architects that have been yeah. hugely successful at selling it's true so that there's not um it, there, there's not any one type of individual that will excel over another and what comes to mind and and i know i, I know you've told this story many times is that your dear friend joe lolly um, he, who used to work at, um, used to manage, I guess, at EDSA. And, and uh, he was quite skilled, even though he was somewhat of an introvert. Yeah. Uh, he was quite skilled at selling. That's right. And uh, brought in a lot of business for EDSA over the, I mean, a Tremendous. ton of business over yeah. the years. But you, you've told many a stories about his ability to sit down with somebody one on one and, 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 uh, and, and just reel them in slowly but surely. He did because he was really a good problem solver solver you know and he would look at the situation he didn't just do what people told him or didn't just solve the problem that was brought to him he was a much bigger picture thinker than that and he would share some of his ideas with the people and of course inevitably it resulted in some really big stuff right right but um he did not meet any stereotypes he was a very slow talking person he didn't look at people when he talked with them a lot of the time (laughs) He kind of talked to the side. He had a lot of speech mannerisms where he said, you know, and and, and things like that over and over. And uh, yet, in spite of all that, um, the guy was a tremendous salesperson. He he had very high prices. People loved him and uh, was a huge success in his his field as a landscape architect and planner. Yeah. Do you think he was able to? It sounds like he was able to develop some empathy with his clients. Oh yeah, and and, and that he that is huge. I think. He, he, sure, he could put himself in their shoes. He understood what was important to them. Yeah. Not just what was important to him, but yeah. he related that to design, and it was a fantastic. Uh, you know, guy was extremely intelligent. I mean, yeah. let's face it, just being smart helps. Yeah. You yeah. know. Yeah. But uh, he thought he could do it. Clearly, he did and did do it. And just made it work. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. That's awesome. So the second thing that you said is that they have to have a disciplined approach toward their selling activities. And I think I know where you're going with this, but talk about what, what you think in your mind is a successful and disciplined approach for an engineer or architect to undertake to to really start to develop that sales muscle. Well, I think it's just doing certain things on a schedule. You know, devoting a certain amount of time to making your calls, uh, a certain day to do to make those calls, making sure you make those calls, talking to people, not necessarily trying to sell them anything, but making calls to current, potential, and and past clients, 
to maintain these relationships on a steady you know basis i mean yeah. it's what you see this is why i think a lot of people fail in our business when we hire these full-time business developers they don't have any self-discipline and there's nobody that's imposing it on them right. you know if they worked at a stock brokerage firm or a professional recruiting firm or an insurance brokerage or something they would have to make so many calls a day they would have to report back to management on their activities constantly sometimes even daily yeah and it, we don't apply that. We don't have these sales managers in our businesses, by and large. Maybe a few large materials testing firms or labs or somebody like that does, but most of us don't. And so then it takes somebody who's got that self-discipline right. to act like their own sales manager. You know, what would the sales manager say to me right now if I wasn't selling anything? Did you make your calls? Right. How many calls did you make? <laughs> How many people did you talk to? Okay. It's just so fundamental. I mean, a lot of it isn't technique. It's just effort. Yeah. You know, yeah. you put the effort out. Not to mention the fact you get practice a lot. You get a lot more practice, so you're going to get a lot better just because you're getting more practice from somebody who doesn't make their calls. Right, right. You know? Yeah, and that's something That's something that I learned from you, and I know that I've, I haven't always been historically good at this. Um, usually when I can catch people, I can make things happen, but... I even I'm just sitting here looking at my little index card that I, I, I make out each day now. And um, part of my routine is just to write down how many sales or follow up calls that I want to make each day. And I've gotten 10 on this little card. And that's awesome. You know, my goal is to, to get through this through the day. And, and, you know, some of them will just be calls just to check in and see how you're doing. And, sure. and others will be, hey, did you get the proposal? And still others will be. Just wanted to chat and and talk and talk to you. And I think we have to get we collectively us in the design industry that, especially you as architects or engineers that serve this space, need to get comfortable with just having conversations with people yeah. and, and seeing where they lead. No, I, I think that's really true. I mean, you know, the problem with trying to do things consistently is we're a project oriented business, right? And you understand that. You know, you have to travel. You have things you have to do by certain deadlines. Um, so those things take precedence and they can, quote, get in the way. But somehow, you know, it's just like making a decision that you're going to exercise every day. We can all, and Lord knows, I'm really good at making excuses <laughs> as to why I don't do it consistently. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the fact is you could do it if you forced yourself to do it. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's just, you know, you've got to have the discipline. Yeah. And I think that's that's really critical when it comes to the selling. Because, you know, sometimes you're going to do well, sometimes you're not. But if you just keep making the effort out there, keep baiting those hooks, then sooner or later, somebody's going to bite. Yeah. Um, the other thing that you mentioned uh, was that they value a good salesperson values a long term relationship with other people. Yeah. And it's not just transactional, you know, what I can get out of you now. And then I don't care after that. I made my big kill. Right. There are some people that think like that. Yeah. It's hard to understand, but they do. Yeah. Because they defeat themselves. You know, it's it, sooner or later you run out of victims. It, it takes a lot more effort to always be winning new people over than it is to keep the same ones that you've already won over. Right. right. Why wouldn't you want to, you know, maintain long term relationships with those people? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And, and Absolutely. some of those things, I mean, it's it just, you know, it's fantastic when you see where they go over time. You really get to see it when you're my age because, you know, just like here, we have a woman who works for us, Hadley, you know, and her grandfather was one of my first clients. I know. He worked at 3D International, Russell Laird. That's so cool. It goes back 38 years. And then he was the one that got me into Carter and Burgess, you know, <laughs> it, and it's, I just maintained a relationship with the guy, Yeah. All, you know, and, and, and we talked and, you know, I ended up doing a lot of business with them, then got me my job at Carter and Burgess. And then, you know, all the stuff that's happened since then. And Carter and Burgess was instrumental in, in launching you as a client at Zweig White and Associates. Oh, yeah. It was, I mean, they were our biggest client, Yeah, you know, at, so, at one point. I mean, so, yeah, that's true. Relationships can take you everywhere. So, yeah. 
You know, yeah. and, 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 you know, I mean, again, don't don't look at it as, well, what can I get out of this person? It's it's ultimately, you know, what can you give that person? Right. And I think that there's a, a much different a much different mindset. And if you think of it from that perspective about what you can give as opposed to what you can get, the get will ultimately happen. But what you give to an individual can can pay off, you know, very much so in the long term. So, yeah, all we need is love. Yeah, it's equal. <laughs> exactly. The love we get is equal to the love we give. Yeah, but absolutely. You know, that was my fifth point in this in this article that you're referring to. Um Good salespeople, they like to help people. Yeah, yeah. You, you talked know? about a, a guy yes. that uh, that's a top a top car salesman actually. And when we yeah. think about car salesmen, we you know it's like we want to take a shower when we talk, when we talk about it because we're like, oh, it's it's just it's just unethical and it's a dirty space. But yeah, he doesn't feel like that at all. No, and I and I actually know some 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 really top car people that are really really good people and and legitimately care about each yeah. and every person they sell a car to. So this guy but, sold two hundred and seventy cars last year, and he's like, I just like to help people. You know, and I that's, thought, that's how I see it. I, whatever they come to me, they got a problem. They need transportation. They want something special, whatever. I help people. Yeah, yeah. And I, that's just true mentality. Yeah. And if you ever deal with him, you'll find he's not pushy at all either. That's also that's a really nice aspect about him. He doesn't follow up and try to close the sale or push you. He just helps you till you make the decision. Right. Right. And and I, that's a that's a good point, because I think a lot of times, um, even if you are trying to go after work that maybe you don't necessarily get, um, you miss out on some tremendous opportunities to follow up with those what would what, what have been potential clients just to see how things are going and to see oh, if yeah. things have worked out the way that they thought they would work out. And then invariably, sometimes you're going to get the answer. You know what? Things didn't work out the way that we hoped. And I'm glad you called me because I'd like to talk with you about possibly Absolutely. helping me out. That happens a lot. It does happen a so lot. So if you lose when it comes to trying to create a sale, don't give up. Yeah. Stay in contact. Then then you come across as somebody that's definitely not out for just business that you legitimately care, like Mark has been saying. And that will resonate with those it with those individuals on a regular basis. Yeah, it's not just a short term process. You know, you, you there's a lot of steps. You don't win every time the first time. Yeah. And you got to keep going back. Um, I think that's that's something, too, that a good salesperson understands. They're not going to get too freaked out if they don't get results right away. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you got to you got to make yourself a, a resource. Yeah. Be helpful. Absolutely. And after a while, people you, you wear people down. That and the fact that at, over time, if you do good work, when you when you do actually sell something, which is key, yeah. people will always come back to you. Now, and there may be long periods of silence in between, but they'll just come back to you because of a the relationship that you establish with them and the fact that they trust you. And if people trust you, and, and as you always say, Mark, no like and trust. If people trust you, eh, forget it. It's game over. I mean, they're always going to ultimately come to you for help. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, but it takes the, time though to develop trust. You it, don't get it overnight. No, you don't. You, know? you don't. You don't. So. so, and and I think the challenge here is that a lot of people listening are like, "Well, you guys, I need to get some business in tomorrow." And I understand that, but if you're taking a long-term approach with the simple fact that you serve it, you serve an industry, you serve the built environment where things are constantly being uh, transformed, things are constantly being built, things are constantly being renewed. There's always going to be opportunities for you to take your skill set and really um, lend it uh, to those that truly need it, um, to the client, to the end user. So just take your time and, and come up with a plan that really works and, and uh, I think would be beneficial for you. So um, that that's I mean, that's in a nutshell is what what it's all about. And, and certainly this is not a, a long, long episode and it's not something that you have to belabor or draw out. The simple idea is that if you want to become a better salesperson, if you want to truly develop those skills is you have to get out there and communicate with people. Like Mark said, um, you've got to first believe that you can succeed to have a disciplined approach to selling, you know, understand that you, you need to get out there and value long term relationships with other people, things that are not going to happen in the short term. And that, you know, sometimes it's it's just you just have to be out there to help people. And if you do that, 
uh, there will be a lot of opportunities for you to provide your services, uh, to provide your expertise to the widest audience possible. So just wanted to encourage you with that. Any final thoughts, Mark, that you want to add to that? Not really. Okay. All right. I think we covered it. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Well, folks, I just want to thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Zweig Letter Podcast. Like I said, it's always great to have Mark Zweig here with us and uh, really appreciate that. There's a lot of great things happening this fall, 2018, and I hope that you guys have had a restful summer and you're ready for what lies ahead and in, in this third end of third quarter into the fourth quarter of 2018 and, and beyond. And so uh, I believe this actual episode is going to be one that's going to stand the test of time because people will come back and listen to this over and over again um, for encouragement to get out there and really get some things done and and maybe even transform their business development and or sales apparatus within the organization so that a you can keep track of what you're doing and that you can make a difference um, with individuals that you come across that are either potential clients or current clients or future clients. So, you know, that's that's my two cents and I'm sticking with it. But thanks again for listening to the Zweig Letter podcast. We uh, want to remind you that, as as always, we want to give you a free gift, and that is a digital subscription to the Zweig Letter newsletter. It comes out every Monday at 12 noon, and the Zweig Letter has run continuously since 1992. We have an outstanding cast of characters that write some amazing articles. We have a lot of guest writers uh, from throughout the industry that provide their uh, insight on what's happening in the design space. And it certainly would encourage you to read this on a regular basis. And uh, listen, folks, this is not spam. This is great information. And there are very few outlets where you can get timely, updated, regular information in, for the design industry, and the Zweig Letter is one of those places. So just visit ZweigGroup.com, go down, scroll down, and click on the Zweig Letter link. All you have to do is put your email address in, nothing else, and you will get a digital subscription to the Zweig Letter on a regular basis. So outside of listening to this podcast or any other podcast that you like to listen to, you can subscribe uh, and get the digital subscription for the Zweig Letter. So we hope you take that um, under advisement and check it out. And if you get a chance, uh, shoot me an email. All my information will be in the show notes. All of Mark's information are in the show notes. And believe you me, if you send Mark or myself an email, we will respond right away uh, because we're all about responsiveness here at Zweig Group. So we appreciate you so much. Thank you to everyone in our listening audience. We hope that you have an amazing day and we look forward to connecting with you next week. Remember, we exist not just to make you more successful. Our existence is beyond that now and we're moving into some new areas where we're really excited to talk about and over the next coming few weeks we will share and reveal some of the things that Zwy Group is working on uh, really to help this industry grow and um and expand. And there's so many opportunities for us to do that within the design space. So we'll be excited to share that in the coming weeks and months ahead. And uh, nevertheless, we appreciate you. uh, And we appreciate you taking time out to listen to this podcast. If it's helped you in any way, please feel free to share it with a friend. And uh, remember, sharing is caring. I'm your host, Randy Wilburn. And this has been another great episode of the Zweig Letter Podcast. Bye for now. Thanks for tuning in to this Zweig Letter podcast episode. If you want more wisdom and inspiration, in addition to information about M&A, strategic planning, HR, and marketing your firm, subscribe now to the digital version of the Zweig Letter free of charge. Just visit thezweigletter.com slash subscribe and leave your email address. Your free subscription will begin immediately.